the Department of Education. I think the federal government is not, as a factual matter, directly involved in education. I think it is a, therefore, a deadweight waste for money to cycle from the taxpayers to the federal Department of Education to then disperse those funds inefficiently as they do, tilting the scales to four-year college degrees over choices that people might have otherwise made that are better choices for them, vocational training, one-year, two-year programs, using it as a cudgel, and this relates to the latter issue you asked about, to tell local schools they don't get that money unless they're adopting what I certainly view as toxic racial and gender ideology-based agendas. They use the money as a cudgel to do it. So I've said that that department that spends about $80 billion of taxpayer money, I'll shut it down. Tonight in New Hampshire, I'm laying out the anatomy of exactly how we'll shut it down and then return that money to the states, to the people, put it in parents' pockets. Very specifically, you have to be a state that has a school choice program in order to receive that Department of Education shut down dividend. I think that if you're that such a state, I would also believe that those states need to write their teachers union, teachers contracts in a way that stop teachers from joining teachers unions, which I think have been a destructive force on our public schools. If you're unionizing against the public, think about who you're unionizing against, the very kids you're supposed to represent. Now we have transparency, we have choice. If you teach it in the classroom, put it online. And then there's an interesting fact in this country where I think you guys will appreciate how bizarre this fact really is. There's not only like a failed positive correlation, there is a negative correlation, an inverse correlation between how much money per student a public school spends and the actual outcomes that that school achieves for its students. So in my version of school choice, my preferred version, it would not just be that parents get to get these vouchers and educational savings accounts to send their kids to some other school. That's part of the story. It's a first step. But I think any parent who moves to a school that spends less per student, which we know based on the data, is actually all else equal a better performing school as it relates to achievement, should be able to take half the delta with them. So to take Chicago or Pennsylvania spending $35,000, $40,000 per student, 15 miles away, you have a school spending fifteen dollars to $20,000 per student. I think they should be able to take half the difference, that ten dollars to $15,000, half that difference of the $20,000, say $10,000 they take with them. You run the math on normal investment returns. You're talking about a quarter million dollar plus graduation gift when that kid graduates from 12th grade. So you tell me which is a better use of money. It's not even close. And I think the head of the That's state a is, idea, yes, a federal bureaucracy. That's a great idea. It's, That's a just, great, it's an arbitrage. Great, did you come up with that idea, idea or did, is that something that's out there by think He was actually yeah. another guy who's an arbitrageur who's a friend, but who shares similar instincts. And like, I'm like, yeah. a, I'm a value investor. I believe in that's market a great dislocation. It's a great incentive. It just makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. yeah. yeah.